Hi everyone, Big Thinny Head Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Bill Callahan record, Shepherd in a Sheepskin Vest. Singer-songwriter Bill Callahan. It's been a while. It's been a while, Bill. It was six years ago that I reviewed Bill Callahan's last record, Dream River, a beautiful contemplative set of indie folk songs with some very wonderful poetry mixed in. And it was about 10 years ago that Bill's solo work really started to turn heads. And even though I have said this before, it is worth mentioning again before all of that, Bill had forged a reputation as one of the most creative minds in slowcore and lo-fi under the name Smog. Through the 90s and aughts, Smog came out with some pretty incredible records and underwent a pretty stark evolution too. Take the 1993 Smog album Julius Caesar, for example, the noisy production, the freaky folk influences, the dejected mood on this thing. It's like Beck's early work except legit experimental and half of the tracks don't feel like they're just taking the piss. Compare that to the far mellower and more coherent sounds Smog was dabbling in just a decade later, and it's like listening to two totally different bands. The material Smog was coming out with in the 2000s saw the project transition into these more Americana-influenced sounds, which allowed Bill to transition into the musical state that he's in the midst of today. So even though it's been years since the release of Dream River, I still very much see Bill kicking around the same creative stomping grounds with his latest effort, too. Though Bill's songwriting methodology on this one has undergone some serious renovations Innovations. Mostly gone are the long, winding, abstract folk meditations of Apocalypse and Dream River. Instead, with Shepard, Bill cuts down the runtime of each track here, for the most part, to about two minutes and change. And this isn't really a brief amount of time for most rappers and pop stars and, and rock bands for a single or even a deep cut, but Bill's songs don't exactly hurry to their destination. It's sort of like shooting the breeze for very short amounts of time over this long strung track list of musical vignettes. And even though the overall feel of the record is relaxed, it is laid back, there are some strange and funny instrumental embellishments that I wouldn't have expected on a Bill Callahan record given just how serene and pristine and spacious and open his last couple of projects were. So the instrumentation this time around, it does have a slightly raw presentation in a way it's like a soft return to the lo-fi days of smog. Emphasis on soft return. In comparison with Apocalypse, the production, the instrumentation here isn't nearly as pristine, and, and purposefully so. The lyrics this time around do see a change of pace too. Bill's writing is a lot more frank, humorous, off the cuff. Occasionally he goes incredibly meta, like on the song Writing, where he is literally writing about writing and how good it feels to be writing again. As it would seem, he did take a somewhat lengthy break from that. On the track Ballad of the Hulk, we have Bill basically narrating the intro of his own song. Well, after this next song, we'll be moving along out of this vein. It's called Ballad of the Hulk. Quite a few tracks on this thing not only see Bill going autobiographical, but doing so with very literal terms. Going on about his domestic life, his wife, his house renovations, his new son. The lyrical tone on the song Son of the Sea is very slice of life. Life very apparent. I got married to my wife. She's lovely. And I had a son. Other personal moments on this project are complemented with more flowery language, like on the track 747, where we hear Bill's very sleepy baritone delivering poetry about flying in a plane. Or the track Watch Me Get Married, where Bill, getting married, and having kids manifests itself into a weird fantasy where all of these children are coming out of his chest, like subsequent generations of a family tree or something. It's, it's, it's still an odd picture. The flow of this album, honestly, is, is not too much unlike the front cover that is pictured here. Bill laying back, stone-faced, like he's in the middle of some kind of vision. Meanwhile, a miniature shepherd with a sheep in his shirt, huh? Is that, is that a sheep in his shirt? Is that a sheep in his shirt? He's marching these little pink sheep into his head. Maybe each sheep is a theme or a song idea or, or a track on this thing. And the sheep, just like these songs, they're hanging there, they're chilling, they're getting led around, they're grazing, they're in no hurry 
to go absolutely anywhere. Like on the song Tugboats and Tumbleweeds, where Bill literally imparts some advice uh, onto the listener, saying, hey, you know, chill, chill out, relax. Don't rush through your, your youth, I guess. Take a tumbleweed year or two where, where, where you, you don't have a care in the world. Which is a nice thought. It's a nice idea, I guess, though I will say that, that Bill's advice sometimes is a luxury that not everyone can afford. Generally, the attitude of this thing is very mellow. It's very sweet. It's very intoxicating, though not always beneficial to the album. It does lead to a feeling a little one-dimensional at points. While none of the more understated and underwhelming tracks in the track listing here are all that bad while they're on, as the album draws on and we get toward the end, uh, the fact that they're kind of padding this album out to be longer than it needs to be becomes very apparent. I will say it's not like Bill pushes it too far on this record, though. He's not giving listeners a big ask on this one, uh, given that it's it's really just an hour of music and not a lot of the tracks on this thing last so long that they overstay their welcome. On top of that, it's not like this diary-like songwriting style is unprecedented at this point. Uh, that's that's basically been Mark Kozlek's M.O. for the past several years. I just wish more songs on this record offered bolder statements and more defined, colorful, and memorable instrumentation. The ratio of great to forgettable songs on this thing could certainly be better. I should still mention some of the gorgeous, moving highlights on this album, though. You have the gospel-inspired Lonesome Valley, which is just wonderful. I also love the cute thumb pianos on the track Call Me Anything and Bill's poetry about Riding a bike on this cut just feels like a blissful dream within a larger blissful dream. The lo-fi eerie tape recording on the first track of this thing is a really great way to kick the entire album off. And the track What Comes After Certainty, this sees Bill wisely waxing poetic on true love. True love is less a magical feeling and more a feeling of constance and certainty in your life as you have forged a long-term bond with uh, your significant other and, and you can depend on that person to be there and, and, and be this recurring uh, supportive force in, 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 in your existence. Though there is a weird detour on this track where Bill talks about signing Willie Nelson's guitar when he wasn't looking. Pretty messed up, if you ask me, Bill. I'm not exactly sure what, what plane of existence this was happening on in his song, but it's, it's still a very odd moment <laughs> on the record. The track The Beast is as good a finale as I think you're going to get on an album like this. The instrumentation reaches a somewhat intense drone. There's also a very sinister intro on this track depicting a smoky battlefield. The lyrics deeper into the track are a weird mix of, of, of dark, but also lovesick. Uh, more lyrics turn up recurring themes that popped up earlier on the record, like uh, the sea and sailors. After this whole thing is over, it feels like I've just experienced this very large, multi-phased, only partially decipherable dream. I'm not entirely sure if Bill's very low-key songwriting and singing style on this thing is is complemented by uh, the, the brief song lengths and, and basic song structures. It doesn't always click, but a majority of the songs on this thing are enjoyable, are quality, are sweet to the ear. Definitely one of the more creative, solid, and I suppose entrancing singer-songwriter records I've heard in 2019. I'm feeling a light to decent Seven on this thing, Tran. Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is a, another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Bill Callahan, forever.